Yesterday in the Daf Yomi reading cycle, a cycle of reading one page of the Talmud front and back every single day until you've read the whole Talmud, the Daf Yomi program finished volume 18. By far, one of the most misquotes of the whole Talmud is in Gitin 57a. Many anti-Semites claim that the Talmud says that Jesus is burning in hell. They often cite the Sonsino Press translation. I have the Sonsino Press translation right here on my desk. Let's read from Gitin 57a. 57a means it is the 57th sheet in volume Gitin. The letter A means it's the front side. 57B is the back side. <clears throat> Gitin 57A starts out. <clears throat> what is your punishment in the other world? He replied, what I decreed for myself. Every day my ashes are collected and sentences pass on me and I am burnt and my ashes are scattered over the seven seas. Who in the world is this? If you go back to Gitin 56b, you find that it is a man named Titus who is saying this. Titus was the Roman emperor who destroyed Jerusalem in the year 70 CE and burnt down the temple. The man who's asking these questions is a man named Onkelos. He was a, most people say a pagan or a heathen, I prefer to say he was a non-Jew because he was, who converted to Judaism. And he's communicating with these historical people through the forbidden act of necromancy, meaning communicating with the dead somehow. One of the people that he communicates from beyond the grave with, it says, he then went and raised by incantations the sinners of Israel. He asked them, who is in repute in the other world? They replied, Israel. What about joining them? They responded, Seek their welfare and seek not their harm. Whoever harms them harms the apple of God's eye. He said, What is your punishment? They replied what their punishment was. And the Sonsino translation says, With boiling hot. I'll paraphrase it. Paraphrase it as human waste. This edition has the exact Aramaic text of the Talmud on the facing pages of its English translation. You can see these pages online for free through edof.com. Herein, there it is. At about this line, you will not see the name Jesus. You will see sinners of Israel. Now, the Sonsino Press has a footnote <clears throat> for the sinners, and it does say in a different manuscript, which is the Munich manuscript, it just simply says Jesus. Well, which Jesus would it be? In the Apocrypha, which is what every Catholic Bible and a lot of Anglican Bibles have, there's an apocryphal book called The Wisdom of Jesus, the Son of Sirach. This Jesus clearly lived around 400 years before the Jesus of Christianity. So could this be referring to that Jesus in the Apocrypha? So that was the Sonsino Press edition. Uh, hope the screen saver didn't mess me up.
Another translation that I often use is by the late Professor Jacob Nussner. I happen to know one of Professor Nussner's students. And the translation follows the exact same Aramaic text as the Sonsino translation does. I wasn't too thrilled with how Professor Nussner translated it. He took a lot of flack for it, but you'll see exactly why in a moment. So it's the exact same thing, Gitin 57a. He went and with witchcraft raised up Israelite sinners. He said to them, who is important in that world? They said to him, Israel. So what about joining them? They said to him, seek their peace, but don't seek evil for them. Whoever touches them is as though he has touched the apple of his eye, meaning God's eye. He said to them, so what is the punishment meted out to you? They said to him, with boiling, and the word that Professor Neusner decided to translate it as is S-H asterisk T. I'm not saying that on my YouTube in case I get struck for it. But it's sinners. At least two, probably more. Does not say Jesus. Here is the Talmud from Corn Publishers in Jerusalem. Now this edition of the Talmud will say Yeshu Hanotsri. Let's see what the Koran translation has for an explanation in Gitin 57a. <coughs> Koran is on safaria.org, so if you read the Talmud on Safaria, you'll be reading this Koran translation. But I want to give you a warning about something. <clears throat> you don't get the side margins and the explanatory notes on Safaria. So again, it's in Gitin 57a. Let me backtrack a little bit in Gitin 57a. Onkelos then went and raised Balaam from the grave through necromancy. Balaam is the non-Jewish prophet from the Bible's book of Numbers that was sent to curse Israel, but bless them instead. He said to him, who is the most important in that world where you are now? Balaam said to him, the Jewish people. Onkelos asked him, should I then attach myself to them here in this world? Meaning, should I convert? Balaam said to him, you shall not seek their peace or their welfare all the days. See Deuteronomy 23, verse 7. Onkelos said to him, what is the punishment of that man? A euphemism for Balaam in the next world. Balaam said to him, in boiling semen. As he caused Israel to engage in lasciviousness behavior with the daughters of Moab. Now here's the part where anti-Semites often quote, but won't read before and after. Onkelos then went and raised Jesus the Nazarene from the grave through necromancy. Onkelos said to him, who is most important in that world where you are now? Jesus said to him, the Jewish people. Onkelos asked him, should I then attach myself to them in this world? Jesus said to him, their welfare you shall seek, their misfortune you shall not seek. For anyone who touches them is regarded as if he were touching the apple of God's eye. And it references Zechariah 2 verse 12. Here's what you're not going to find on Sepharia. Directly below that is Rabbi Adin Evan Israel Steinsalt's explanation. Yeshu Hanotsri. In standard versions of the Talmud, this story appears without the name Jesus the Nazarene. 
as the name was removed by internal censors. This was the Roman Catholic Church. In Tractate Sota 47a, Rabbi Yehoshua ben Parchia is depicted as having pushed Jesus the Nazarene away with both of his hands. The Gemara relates that Rabbi Yehoshua ben Parachia was returning to Jerusalem following his flight to Alexandria in Egypt, together with his student, Jesus the Nazarene. After stopping in an inn and receiving reverential treatment, Yehoshua ben Parachia mentioned to Jesus that the inn was beautiful. Jesus responded that the innkeeper's wife was not attractive. This response led Rabbi Yehoshua ben Prachya to excommunicate Jesus. Rabbi Yehoshua ben Prachya was unable to bring himself to revoke the decree of excommunication until it was too late and Jesus turned away from Judaism. It must be noted that the story of Rabbi Yehoshua ben Prachya, who was driven from Jerusalem by the Hasmonean king Yanai, could not have taken place any later than the year 76 BCE. Consequently, the Jesus the Nazareth referred to in these stories cannot be the individual around whom the Christian faith was later established. Many commentaries suggest that some or all Talmudic references to Jesus must refer to another person. Here is why I recommend people get the Talmud for themselves in print at home. So you can read the text for yourself. That was a very quick examination of Gitin 57a. Most anti-Semites will quote from the Sonsino Press edition, which does not say Jesus. But even if it did say Jesus, like the Koran Talmud does, which Jesus is it? Is it the Jesus of the apocryphal book called Sirach? Is it the Jesus of, of a man whose ossuary was found in 1980 with his bones inside a limestone box with his name inscribed in Aramaic on the side? You really think it's really about the Jesus of Christianity? Not likely. For one reason, because even the Koran Talmud edition that safaria.org uses, the publisher in its notes clearly say it's not the Jesus of Christianity because this teacher Yehuda ben Prachya did not live past the year 76 BCE. The Jesus of Christianity lived and died. He died around the early to mid 30s CE. This is nearly a 70 year difference. So I hope that's helpful with Gitin 57a. I thought about going through the first volume first and then getting to Gitin later, but since Gitin 57a is oftentimes the most misquoted, the most misreferenced, I figured I would ta tackle this one first. So if you want to see Gitin 57a from the Aramaic text, I'll put a link to edof.com in the description. And you can see the Aramaic page for yourself. Actually, you can see the Aramaic of the entire Talmud Bavli, if you'd like, free of charge. I hope this video has been helpful. Now, to start looking at what I'll be getting into in the next video. To be continued.